All right, today on the show, we are diving into some 90s nostalgia here, fueled by the latest Geico commercial, featuring my next guest, D.C. Glenn. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, French vanilla, Rocky Road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. That's right. I'm happy to welcome DC Glenn of Tag Team. Whoop, there it is. Hey, DC, how you doing, man? Hey, man, good to be here. So uh, my first question is, I know that you've had a lot of struggles in the music industry, especially when you started. Uh, you had the big hit with Whoop, There It Is, and then you had some legal trouble with that. But in spite of it all, you still kept going. What does it take, man? People must ask you all the time. What does it take to to become something successful, especially now in today's world. What, what do you tell them? Well, all it was was hustle, man. I mean, I've been working hard all of my life and I do not fear work. So, right. you know, I try to gain mastery in all the things that I do. Tasha, did you know God? And it just works out well for me. And, um, you know, back then, it was just about making songs, making songs, making demos, getting better every day until we, you know, reached our goals. And once we reached our goals, we were very, very happy. You know, it's funny, man. When I think back uh, to that era of time, the early 90s, when hip hop was just like starting to be taken seriously, really. Uh, and then all of a sudden it took a big turn and more of a hard direction. And, you know, I'm thinking Biggie, Tupac, uh, Snoop, even Hammer. Remember, Hammer actually decided to try to go hardcore, uh, Vanilla Ice, those kind of things. Uh, that was the trendy thing to do at the time. Was there any kind of pressure for you to take your positive music and turn it into something a little more hardcore because that was kind of what was in vogue at the time and popular at the time? No, there was nothing. I mean, you know, don't make it harder than what it was. All it was was young kids partying, having fun, wanting to be rappers. That's it's, it's that simple. Everybody thinks Woomp There It Is was this big Manhattan project where we had whiteboards and, you know what I mean, the, the theorems and all kind of stuff like that. And it was just about, you know, a song about us partying on a Friday night chasing girls. And when it comes to the music part of it, it's really funny. I think about how many times I've actually played your song uh, because I, like you, I was working at a strip club uh, at that period of time too. And uh, and I know how desperate those clubs can be for some really cool uh, club music, especially at the time of the early 90s and so. You actually had a great opportunity being a DJ. You had a very captivated audience in a great area to listen to some of your stuff. Because I think different, right? So here's the beauty of it. I've learned in my lifetime and obtain the ability to take any negative emotion, pain, fear, envy, jealousy, hatred, despair. Put it in my pocket, don't react, and use it later for fuel, right? So any negative vibe that someone gives me, that is a solution to a problem for me. Right. That's how I see it. I don't see it any other way. Like, I love to be wrong. Right. Because being wrong. Just does so many things for you. Right. Perfect example. We all know people who we argue with. People we love. We argue with. And they're cynical. And. You know, I'm not going to argue with people because. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But a lot of people will keep arguing because they can't take being wrong. Their ego can't take it. Their pride can't take it. And I love being wrong because what it does is it beats down my ego and sequesters my pride to the point where it's not a factor anymore. And while I'm trying to find a solution, the other people will keep keep winning, trying to win the argument. And they're going further and further and further and down a rabbit hole until their arguments become their reality which are not based in fact, and then they are truly lost. And me, 
I love being wrong because it's the path to being right. So which road are you going to take? The rabbit hole to untruth or the path to understanding the truth and never being wrong at that truth again? And I do that with everything. Perfect example, if I got an audition tomorrow that I got to have done for acting and it requires me to be very angry, right, at this woman. And I was arguing with a friend of mine last week. And I didn't blow up or anything, but it was eat me up inside, right? I'm blowing up inside, but I'm not showing it. So I put it in my pocket and I use it later. So I think tomorrow I'm going to take it out and use it. And now, instead of me trying to find a character or be a caricature, the character on that page becomes me. And because it's steeped in reality, I bring that character to life and everybody can relate. That's yeah. Everybody who says stuff like that, everyone, it, it comes from somewhere. It comes from somewhere that that's kind of a personal place. Usually, where does it come from, from for you? Because you have this real passion about your work ethic. I can I can see it. I can feel it and, and fighting for what you believe in, because it took a lot of hustling for you to actually make it with whoop. There it is. Where did that come from for you? Did anything happen in your life that made you like really want to go out and go and go for it and become so passionate and so um, so involved in a hustle? Because my mother and my father, because they worked me and my brother like a dog, right? And you know, I've been you know I've been stemming collard greens and shucking peas since I was five years old. My mother had a prep cook. My father was do my wash my car, cut the lawn, mow the you know. Uh, uh, cut the hedges and they gave us they gave us um an allowance and we had our chores to do but they wouldn't take our money away if we didn't do our chores or do what they asked they would hurt us in other ways so it was a reward and a consequence based upbringing i had so if i didn't go to church on sunday i couldn't play with my friends football because we used to play on sundays right they knew how to get to me to make me do right if i didn't clean my room in the morning before I went to school. I couldn't watch TV that night, right? Little things like that that just stick you, right? The things that you want. Because, man, as a kid, watching cartoons after school, nothing was better. Or would, or if I didn't do something during the week, she's like, nope, you can't watch cartoons on Saturday morning. What? That was painful. So that didn't happen too often. And what really started my hustle, I remember the day, we had a blizzard in Denver and we were one of the only families on the block that had a snow blower. And me and my brother did ours in 20 minutes. And then I saw Mr. Grant struggling. We went and did his yard. Then we did the whole block cause we're kids playing in snow, right? But we're actually working and clearing people's, you know, driveways. And that next week, as we're coming back from school, people would call every, every day. Somebody was calling us to their house. Like, Hey, Here's $20. I appreciate you doing my walkway. What? And once I knew that I could get big money for hustling, I never looked back. And then I had a paper route. Then I worked at an ice cream shop. Then I worked at the AV department at the Auraria campus at the college, you know, putting around project, pushing around projectors and making sure they're in all the classes. And then I started chefing at the restaurants, right? I've never, ever, feared work and I love work right and even you know one of my, and I and I use tactics right one of my first tactics I call it learn how to learn you know, learn how to learn tactics right and the first one was you know when I was in high school I always had a job and I'm like how you always have a job I looked I, you know my friends be like I went around driving around for like five, you know five hours trying to find a job it's like how many places did you go to four I was like wow I was like, I bet you I can get you a job in five minutes. It's like, go get me the yellow pages. For those who don't know what the yellow pages are, just imagine your computer in the form of a big book about yellow book about this big, right? And um I said, What do you want to do? I want to work at the restaurants. Okay. Go to the A's. Hey, how you doing? Are you hiring? No. Okay, thank you. Hey, are you filling applications? No. Okay, thank you. Hey, I just wonder if you're, you know, letting people fill out applications. 
shoot, if you come up here, I got a job for you because a girl just quit on me. All right, thank you. I'll be there. Boom. Just like that. Learn how to learn. Why are you going to drive around the city all day where you just get in the phone book and call people, ask for their manager, and say, hey, you need somebody to work for you? I've always been like this. Now, again, at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of hip hop, um, especially in the 70s or so. Mainstream songs were not really out there. I'm thinking, you know, the Funkadelics, uh, Rick James, James Brown, they weren't really big mainstream in the 70s, um, but they were more culturally big, I think, at the time. Would you say that some of them influenced you or what were some of your influences growing up and what did you see? I was in the Barry Manilow in the 70s. I was not exposed to black music till I got to high school and got around Steve and them, right? And the next phase of me being exposed to more, you know, black music was uh, when I got to Atlanta. Like, I didn't know who Al Green was and all those. Now, you know, I had it. I listened to stuff because my dad listened to, you know, Marvin Gaye and stuff like that. But it never was, me musically was more instruments, right? And Really what influenced me was when I became a DJ and I ordered all of the records up from all over the country, right? So I'm ordering records from New York, I'm ordering records from DC, I'm ordering records from uh, San Francisco and LA. And every week I get brand new records, right? And I'm hearing what's going on in the Bronx. I'm hearing what's going on in South Central LA. I'm hearing the, the, the white label stuff, the stuff that people just... We gonna do a record. We gonna press it up and throw it out there, right? And I'm influenced by MC Shan and BDP and Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, and I'm influenced by Kraftwerk and Planet Rock and Soul Sonic Force and Al Fish and Egyptian Lover and Dr. Dre. Back when he was making up tempo music, because that was his first record, Surgery, right? And that was a big record in California, and all those records were big, big records in California because they were all up tempo. They were danceable. So I have had many influences when it comes to music, but it was more my tenacity of, because back then it was just brand new. You could do your own thing. I would use pots and pans, flutes. I remember when I first learned how to make songs on my own, uh, my boy Johnny Z, John Zanino, he produced um, In Too Deep. They made a record called Back to the Hotel back in the day. And he, he you know, I met him in college and we stayed on the same floor. And I introduced him to hip hop music. He introduced me to heavy metal, right? And he bought a, a Tascam four track. And I started making my own songs because that was four tracks that I could put stuff on and make a song. And I started making songs. Then Steve heard them, thought I was in a devil worship, and he was like, but that's dope. So I'm going to me, get me a four track. And then it evolved and we start getting equipment and we start making music. And this was all just fun. Like there was no, everybody's trying to figure out what the formula was. There was no formula. It was just us having fun. It's like watching TV, right? You watch TV because it's fun. You like your favorite show. This is what you do. So 